I'm Wayson Fiber, and we're at Deezerland, a place you've never heard of, but it has some very interesting special cars inside. We are in Orlando, Florida, on a quest on behalf of all of Australia to find the last on screen used Mad Max Interceptor Ford Falcon XB. It is located at the Deezerland Museum. And when we find it, we are going to steal it and return it to the people of Australia. And our secondary goal, which is actually equally important to me, is finding the Lotus Esprit Turbo that was used in For Your Eyes Only. America's largest automobile extravaganza. I'm not sure that's true. Oh yeah. How could I forget to mention? Also, all of his cars are supposedly for sale. You can buy the Mad Max Interceptor. You can buy the For Your Eyes Only Lotus Esprit. I actually tried contacting them and asking them, how much do they cost? Well, they don't tell you. If you have to ask, sir. I assume what that means is if you email them and say, I have $3 million. I'd like to purchase your Lotus Esprit. I'm sure they would sell it to you for $3 million, but it's not really for sale. I mean, everything is for sale, right? I'll sell you this hat for $3 million. I love this hat. I've actually been planning this for years now. This place wasn't here just a year or two ago. They moved all the cars and they moved the whole museum. And so it was unclear even where to find these cars. Are you excited? I'm excited. It has a certificate of authenticity attached to it, and it's a 1980 model. This may actually be the real CD from the movie. Do you know if this is a real movie car? Yeah. We found the Bond entrance over here. So the guy up front told me that indeed all the cars are for sale. They don't have price tags on them. They had to cut the roof off of the Toyota 2000 GT in order to fit Sean Connery inside. So apparently there are three convertibles that exist of the Toyota 2000 GT. It is here. It is here. We have visual proof. It is here. This is a real movie car here. One oh nine three oh. Chassis one oh nine three oh. This is a real movie car. God, this color though. The reason they used the copper in the filming is because he was going to be driving through the snow and the copper paint showed up against the snow better. The color was brand new in 1980 when they were making the film, but I mean, to me, it looks very 70s. But at the same time, the wedge design is very 80s. But if you go back to the Lamborghinis and Ferraris and things, the wedge design was part of the 70s too. Like, major turning point in car design, but it actually happened a lot earlier than your brain thinks it did. When I was in fifth grade, I played this song on the clarinet with the rest of the school band. It brought my mom to tears. So yeah, this one turns into a submarine, which is really cool when you're 10 years old, but when you grow up, the movie that you prefer is For Your Eyes Only. Okay, now we have to talk about James Bond's songs. 
for your eyes only is pretty good, but it is not as good as nobody does it better. If you've enjoyed listening to me yap about James Bond, please check out the Peterson Museum video because they had a special Bond display going on at the time. I guess this is the car from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I don't know because I never watched the movie because everybody told me I should not watch the movie because it was so bad. Sean Connery did say that he wish he'd never been in this movie. Sean Connery was in that movie? Yeah. Wow, maybe I should see it. Oh, he regrets it. John Cusack regretted being in Better Off Dead. I just learned that the other day. It's his best film. I saw the movie Giant, and I don't think that this car was in that movie. Thunderbird's car. I barely remember Thunderbird's. It's even before my time, if you can believe that. But I was knowledgeable enough to know in the movie Juno when she says Thundercats are go that she got it wrong it's supposed to be Thunderbirds are go Thundercats was like 20 years later Thundercats are go Thunderbirds are go Thundercats ho! Yes, we have to talk about this thing. I mean, we have to at least show it on camera. Let's, let's look at the longest car in the world. It has a golf course on it. It has a swimming pool in it. You'd be thinking, well, with all this real estate, you could put a reasonably sized golf course and a reasonably sized swimming pool. But no, no, it has a tiny, tiny swimming pool and it has a tiny, tiny golf course. I, I don't know what all this space is used for. This isn't even car, this is like made of plastic and cardboard. Oh, okay, I'm approaching the golf course now, everyone. And the swimming pool. <laughs> There's like one usable seat in this whole thing. Here's the golf course, they, they seem to have taken out the hole. And here's the swimming pool, which is actually more of a tub that doesn't work. Oh yes, and, and a helipad, of course, yes, for your drone. This is the longest car in the world. It's restored and ready to cruise. I wonder how often they take it out. I didn't know that Israel made any cars. Israel's first and last sports car. It's missing a badge, so he's printed out a photo of a badge on sticker paper and stuck it onto the side of the vehicle. I love small cars. Small cars, not microscopic cars. Some of these are a little too small even for me. Wow, look at that pinstriping and hand-painted lettering. Just to advertise the business, at least at one point. I hope this guy or this woman is still in existence doing this work. It's beautiful. And there is a phone number on this car. I want to see if they're still doing this type of work. Whoever you were, thank you for keeping the tradition alive while you were alive. I'm glad that we have this little relic of your existence. Oh, so, 
Some of the cars actually have informational plaques on them. This was Ed, Big Daddy Roth's car, and his work. Baja Bug, you can do anything you want to a Volkswagen Beetle and it'll still look awesome. They have a Facebook group called Ruined VWs. But they're not ruined, they're all awesome. Everything you do to a Volkswagen is awesome. Including the Purvis Eureka, which I just figured out was in the movie Death Race 2000 as the Sterling. Never clicked in my head that this was a car that you could actually buy. And there was another one of these in the movie Condor Man. If you've never heard of it, it's not too surprising. I hadn't heard of it. Thank you, commenters. Let me just tell you that Condor Man always wins in a game of chicken. Stop! It's Chrissy with gas! Nothing. That's what he wants. Volkswagen. Volks means people. Wagen means car. It's the people's car. And here we have the Schwimmwagen. Schwimm means swim and Wagen means car. So it's the swimming car. The Schwimmwagen is from Puerto Rico. I guess well now we know how they got it here. And we have the, the Kubelwagen. Kubel, I don't know what that means. And there is a group of people that moved to Texas and to this day there's still a few of them, the old timers, that speak German in Texas. They have their own variant of Texas German. When they got to Texas, they discovered a new animal that they didn't have back in Germany. So they gave it a German name rather than simply asking the other people there what they called it. The animal was a skunk and they called it a Stinkkot. We should talk about the dictator in the room, Hitler. He was friends with Ferdinand Porsche and he wanted to create this people's car, which that sounds like a nice idea. Everyone could have a car, but then they quickly went to war and they had to put aside the plans for the people's car, so they built the Kubelwagen and the Schwimmwagen and all that stuff. After the war, the Volkswagen Beetle was almost forgotten, but it was a British soldier that said, wait a minute, these are cool. We should try and keep building these things. We need to sort of salvage this idea of the people's car. And history was made. For a long time, it was the most produced car on earth. I think they got beat by the Corolla. One thing I really have to say for this guy is he has very eclectic tastes. This place is kind of like going to the Lane Museum in Nashville. It just has every weird thing on earth. This place is gorgeous. You can't walk into this room without instantly becoming a fan of Chrysler. Like he's shown a lot more love for the cars in this room than he did for like the mini cars. They're, they're just stacked up to the ceiling in a darkened enclosure. Wait, this is the Russia room and we don't have a, a Lada Neva in here? Lada Nevas are awesome. It's like a little tiny hatchback, but it's got four-wheel drive and it's jacked up a little bit. I'm disappointed in you, Mr. Deezer. Much as I appreciate your eclectic tastes. Not eclectic enough. This place is built like a mall. I feel like I'm in a shopping mall full of cars. Let's go into the Great Gatsby store. A lot of the rooms even have different music, which is kind of cool. You feel like you're entering a different part of the world and a different time period in every different room.
Okay, those are gorgeous. I think we found it. I think we found it. The true last of the V8 interceptors. We can do the guts, Barry. The only remaining Mad Max hero car that was actually used in Mad Max 1 and 2. It's kind of semi restored. It's like cleaned up for museum display. I wouldn't have cleaned it up, no. I had to drive it through the Outback for a couple of days. It'll be good as old. I have a little Outback dirt on my shoes. If anyone has two million dollars, this car can be yours. I'm joking, I really don't know how much they want for it, but I think they want an unreasonable amount of money for it. It was all over the internet that this car was for sale and nobody bought it. We should try to find out how much this car costs. I hear it's for sale. The question I have for you is how much are these cars, specifically the Mad Max Interceptor? Uh, Mad Max is currently sitting at 2.5 million. Come on guys, let's start up a collection. We got this. When I was a kid, it was just a cartoon. But nowadays, there are some replica cars they've made, I think, mostly out of old Corvettes. I love this thing. My earliest memories were like watching Speed Racer on television. It kills a guy in the intro. <laughs> Your life's eraser. Boom! Speed racer. Speed racer does not mess around. Miami Vice. This television show sounds very interesting. In the timeline that I'm from, we never got to watch it, but I can now, in this timeline, buy the DVD, so I think I'm gonna have to check it out. Starsky and Hutch. It says it was actually used on screen too. Easy rider motorbike. Oh, Megaforce! Megaforce! This movie is terrible, but I love it. I mean, I don't really love it, but I love the cars from this movie and the motorbikes from this movie, and I have Hot Wheels from this movie. For the longest time, I actually thought that these were the cars from Damnation Alley because I had seen the movie Damnation Alley. I'd actually not even seen Megaforce until I grew up. And so I love the movie Damnation Alley. And back in those days, you couldn't like rewatch a movie that you like. You would just sort of have to remember it vaguely. And so I thought that this was the truck from Damnation Alley. just like the ending that's terrible but the thing about movies is and stories in general is you want them to have a good ending okay like if you have stuck with the story to the end you want it to be good you can put up with a bad beginning you can put up with a bad middle as long as the ending is good that's what matters megaforce drop the ball on that one Hal Needham was such a cool guy. He wrote a book, Stuntman. It's all about being a stuntman in the 60s and 70s and the, and the 50s even. 
going from horses to cars and back before they did it all in CGI. He was pretty much the greatest stunt person of all time. And they gave him a chance to direct Smokey and the Bandit. And it's one of the best films of all time. And it did great. He did Cannonball Run, which I still feel is a little underrated. It's really good. And then he did things like Megaforce and Hooper. And they were just awful movies. So he was really hit or miss when it came to directing. But oh my god, what a guy. And he used to just hang out with Burt Reynolds. They were best buds. They lived together for a while. The movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is based on the friendship between Hal Needham and Burt Reynolds. This movie is super cool. They spent the entire budget of the movie again on the music. God damn, the Pusherman. God damn, the Pusherman. But it's worth it. Especially because the plot is not that great. The music holds it together. And it's definitely a surreal, weird film. And you can never tell nowadays, was that surreal feel intentional back in those times? Or was that just the way all movies felt and looked back then? There's a van over here. The music starts. A team van. Those wheels are amazing. One thing that always bugged me about this though is it's a slightly gray color on top and a black color on the bottom. Doesn't show up on a television screen at all. It should have just been black on top. The Monkey Mobile. This is even before my time. I don't think I've ever watched The Monkees. Dragula. This place really is kind of a mecca. This collector has just been amassing every significant movie car throughout history. Greased Lightning is here. I want to be sure to get some footage of Grease Lightning because some people actually can stand that movie. We're about to see a collection of Batmobiles. Most Batmobiles are just over the top ridiculous, but a couple of them are kind of cool. Yeah, this one has got style. I mean, it is over the top. It looks like it's out of a comic book, but it has style at least. Who's your favorite Batman? The best Batman movie is The Dark Knight, but I really love the 80s ones too. The 80s ones have the right combination of being just silly enough while also being just serious enough. And then The Dark Knight just kind of threw that out the window and says, we're gonna be dead serious. But they did such a good job. Which actor do you think was the best Batman? Now that's... Okay. Yeah, See, that's so now a great, you answered the best movie in your opinion. So that's actually a great question. I would say then Michael Keaton was actually the best Batman. Christian Bale? No, he wasn't a good actor. I mean, he's not a bad actor. He's just, he played a boring Batman. But the movie itself was so good that it just didn't matter. Bat Cycle is really cool. But you got to see the Bat Girl Cycle. It was even better. If that's possible. Wait, Batman had a micro car? Wait, something about this hasn't quite clicked in my head. What the heck is going on here? Why was Batman driving a Messer Schmidt? Yeah. Cars actually used to be made of wood. And I'm not just talking about this kind of car, I'm saying before this kind of car, they were mostly made of wood. And that's because cars came from carriages that were towed by horses. And they looked a lot like carriages. They just weren't being towed by horses anymore. And over time, they used less and less wood. And wood became a more decorative element.
There's a Pontiac Aztec over here. Screw these classic vets. Oh, that's right. Pontiac Aztecs aren't obscure anymore. Everybody knows what they are now because they were in Breaking Bad. But there was a time when you see one of these, you're like, what the heck is that thing? And you could open it up and they had tents that you could put in the back so that you're half in the hatch and half in a tent. They're super cool, super practical. Everybody hated them. These gorgeous pastel colors. It's one cool thing about Florida is they have so many buildings that come in these colors. And imagine these cars driving down these roads with these pastel buildings. Checker cab. I think a lot of people might not realize this, but these cars were clearly designed in the 50s, but they kept building them looking like this all the way up into the 90s. And so it's not just people from the 50s that think of this as a New York cab. It's people from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Like they kept driving these through almost the entire second half of the 20th century. Pinball, Mustang Pinball, you see this at every arcade. There's a skate park back here. We went out like the secret exit and stumbled upon the skate park. This has been a trip to the Deezerland Museum in Orlando, Florida. It's kind of an unknown hidden car person's mecca. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Have a good night. If you're watching me at work, shame on you. Get back to work. Thanks to Mad Skelly for the camera work. Florida, it's the Queensland of America.